What's going on, Journey Church? I want to have a moment, just welcome those that are joining us at all of our campuses and those that are joining us online. Uh, Journey Avon, one more time, can you give a round of applause for all those that are joining us at via different campuses and online? You know, we like to say Journey Church is one, is, uh, one church in many locations, uh, and it's great to have so many joining us in Cleveland and even outside of Cleveland because of technology. Hey, I want to take a moment, and I want to pray. Um, uh, I want to pray for Pastor Garen and his wife, Kristen, uh, their home church where they came to us from. Uh, their pastor uh, just needs a great healing in his body. And, uh, and you know, we're, we're not, uh, it's not all about Journey Church, right? It doesn't really matter what's on the marquee. We're all in the same battle together, and when one of us hurts in the body of Christ, uh, I think we all should hurt. It all should weigh heavy upon us. And when I hear of a pastor uh, facing something that's medically, um, medically challenging, how many know that we have a God that's bigger than any medical um, situation that may, may arise? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to pray uh, just for this pastor. God, I pray right now that healing would be upon him right now in Jesus' name. I pray for a quickening of his body. I pray that you restore some things that need to be restored. Uh, even if the doctors say A, uh, you can veto whatever that A diagnosis is. We trust you and our confidence is upon you. God, I pray right now that his, his whole body to be strengthened and healed in Jesus' name. He has much work to do. He is not done with his purpose and his, his, his divine uh, redemptive purpose on this side of eternity. I pray right now and speak to his body and come into agreement with life and not death in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen, amen and amen. I want you to know we love you guys and we're praying big time for you and your pastor. Uh, hey, listen, we're wrapping up our series called Winning the War in Your Mind. And uh, I'm, I'm taking some of the content from a phenomenal book. I'm asking that you would actually order and do or download to your, uh, your iPad or your phone, whatever it might be. It's called Winning the War in Your Mind by Craig Groeschel. It's a phenomenal book. Uh, I'm gonna share some of the content, but again, I'm just scratching the surface of what he shares. Man, it's brought a lot of freedom to my life, my wife's life, and now I have my kids reading it as well. But let, let's just be honest honest with ourselves is that we know this is that the battle in our life, believe it or not, is in our mind. No matter what's happening in the world, we can look at, uh, uh, you know, uh, politically, economically, uh, relationship stuff that's happening in your life. Believe it or not, most of that battle takes place right here. And the battle, if the enemy knows if he can get your thoughts off, t off track, he knows he can get you behaving wrongly. We know this to be true, that you cannot live a positive life or even a life fulfilled of what God has for you with a negative mind. Believing the lies that the enemy would try to feed you or lies that you believe about yourself or other situations. How many can relate to that? How many would say, listen, I have problems, you know, I have runaway thoughts, I have irrational worries, uh, I, 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 I can go down the road really, really quick in, in a negative thought, I can sometimes be a negative Nelly. Are there any negative Nellies in the house? Okay, just look at the confession right now. They'll be running to the altar here in just a moment. How many of you are sitting next to a negative Nelly? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But how does this play out in our life? You know, you're, you're in school and you're worried about getting good grades and you're wondering, I'm not doing too well and if I don't get the right grades, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get the scholarship that I want and go to the college that I need to go to, to to get the job that I want to make a lot of money and if I don't get the right job, I'm, I'm not gonna find the right girl to marry, the right person to marry and, and I'm gonna marry the wrong person and because I marry the wrong person, I'll probably wind up having the wrong kids and because of the wrong kids, their teeth are gonna be all jacked up because you know, and then I can't afford it because I had the wrong kids and, 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 and I had the wrong job and, and they, I can't survive and, I, and they're gonna have to go get a job but they can't because they're, they're, we're, we can't survive and then they're gonna revolt to a, uh, result to a life of crime. And then in their life of crime, they're gonna get arrested and go to prison. It's gonna give me a headache and oh my gosh, speaking of this headache, I think it's a tumor. <laughs> I know that's all fun and joking but isn't that how it works? We have this one little thought and pretty soon we ruminate and we go down the path. We learned this in the past. We talked about these neural pathways that we form in our mind. You have billions of them in your mind. And you're forming new ones every moment and every single day or you're reinforcing some old ones. Here's the things that we learned about uh, in the past few weeks is that it's like a path. The more I walk on that path, the more I can think and go down that path. So if I have constant negative thoughts, I'll simply always default to this negative thought, this wrong filter, but we learned that we can actually renew our mind. We can hijack and reduce some of these neural pathways 
with the God thoughts that God has for us. What I want to do is I want to read Philippians chapter 4, verse, uh, four uh, Philippians 4, verse 6 through 9. And if you can, for the reading of the word, will you stand to your feet for a moment if you can? If you're at home, uh, please stand to your feet if you're able to. Uh, and I really feel like we want to give honor today to, to, to the word of God. And I also want you to hear it with not just natural ears, but maybe some spiritual ears and what, the God, what God is trying to communicate to, to you and I uh, about a battle that I think every single one of us face and many of us are losing. But in Christ Jesus, we can be victorious in. Amen? Do not be anxious about anything. Wow. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request. What request? The anxiety, the grades, all those things, present your request to who? To God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, what should we do? We should think about such things and what will happen. And the God of peace will be with you. I believe today that many of you, although you have an anxious mind, you're gonna leave here with a peaceful mind. You have rumination and worry and concerns about things that are so big and heavy upon your heart and your mind. But today, God's gonna break that off your life. Maybe you've had the cycle of just worry. You worry, your mom worried, and her mom's mom's roommate's friend's cousin's dog wrote worried. <laughs> it just passed all the way down from your generations, but today we're gonna break that generational curse of worry and anxiety. Some of you, you can't even sleep at night. We're gonna break that off of you today because the word of God, you're gonna not just only receive, hear it, but you're gonna receive it into your heart and your soul, and it's gonna break those bondages in your life. Can I get an amen? Do me a favor, take your hands and just put them on your temple. Heavenly Father, right now as we pray for our mind, even before we go into this message any deeper, we commit our mind to you. Your word says that a carnal mind is at enmity with God. But Lord, our mind is not carnal today. Our mind is renewed. Our mind is refreshed. Our mind is yielded to you in Jesus' name. Every thought we take captive. Every bit of anxiety and worry that we brought here today, we brought to our campus or online, we give it to you. You are the God who created us. You're the God that can sustain us. And you're the God that can bring peace to us. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Come on. As you grab a seat, high five your neighbor and say, peace. Peace. Some of y'all were like throwing gang symbols. You're like, peace. Peace. Some of you white people are like, peace. Okay, there you go. <laughs> hey, let's talk about worry, anxiety, and the mind. What do we know? What have we learned in the past few weeks? We learned your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. The good news is this, that if you're thinking good things, your life is gonna move in that direction. We talked about our tongue, but also our thoughts is like the rudder on a ship. Wherever you direct it, the ship or your life or your behavior is gonna go in that direction. The way that a man thinks, so he will become. Whatever a man believes in his heart, confesses with his mouth, is what scripture says, it will be done unto him. The very thing you think, the neural pathways that you forge, it will be done unto you. That's wonderful, they're good thoughts, right? Not so good if they're bad thoughts and negative thoughts. What do we know about the mind? Well, the mind has this little, little thing in the mind that uh, is called amygdala. Everyone say amygdala. Look at that. You're getting smarter and smarter just coming to the church. It's this little, little almond portion part of your brain. We'll put it up on the screen here for a moment. And this little almond portion of your brain is the, the, the protection device of your brain. It's the fight or flight portion of your brain. It tells you, listen, if you are in danger, it is time to fight for survival. There's danger and the 
uh, amygdala kicks off and sends through your body the strong uh, chemical called adrenaline and you are ready to fight or flight. It's where it says, be on guard, protect yourself, dukes up, you'll get ready, here we go. If you're out in the garden, you see a snake, what do you do? Ah! Amygdala fires adrenaline inside you, you grab that snake. No, you don't do that. That's me, I fight. Some of you might do flight, and you're like Forrest Gump. Run, Forrest, run. This week, I was with a bunch of guys. I fell asleep in the car on this highway. The gentleman driving decided to pass a truck that was going 75 miles an hour. We are now going 100 miles an hour. I wake up to him swerving in the other lane, and I see another car coming towards us. The amygdala pumps adrenaline inside me. I jump up, I grab the wheel, I turn it, I go off road, ramp. No, I'm joking. You're asleep and your alarm randomly goes off and you're wondering, what is going on? Do I need to protect myself? The problem with the amygdala is it's not objective. It's hardwired inside your body. It's very, it's very easily triggered. I'll give you an example. And a lot of this hardwiring comes from your experience. It comes from what you're taught. It's your worldview. It's how you filter things. It's your home environment. It's things that happen to you at school. I'll give you an example. Growing up, I've shared with you many times that I moved around a lot. And I, when my mom would go to work, my mom would say, never answer the front door. When the doorbell rings and someone knocks on it, what I want you to do is go and hide so no one sees you moving inside the house. You know, we very often got evicted from our apartment complexes. I lived in an apartment complex pretty much most of my life, which is just fine, right? The, the doorbell on our apartment complex door didn't even have a real doorbell. It was like, it wasn't ding, ding. It was like, tong, 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 tong. So it just scared the bejibbers out of you. So whenever that doorbell rang, I would go hide. Even to this day, whenever the doorbell rings, my amygdala kind of tenses up and tells me, get ready. This might be the moment that the shoe drops. This might be the moment, like when you were a kid, that you were evicted and you had to move. You got it on a Friday. You were in a new school system on Monday. I'd freeze. My heart rate would go up and I would jump and go high with my brothers and sisters. Now you have another part of the brain. Another part of the brain is called the prefrontal cortex. Welcome to... Health class and all that. Prefrontal cortex. Now, the prefrontal cortex is a logical part of your brain. How many are logical people? You're just logical. Okay. It's a logical side of your brain that actually works in conjunction with the amygdala. You hear a noise at night. Your amygdala says, oh, my gosh, we're going to die. You've watched 22 Dateline shows. It all started the exact same way, and you know how it's going to end. Then your prefrontal cortex says, no, silly, it's probably the dog. Without the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala would respond according to its programming. Now, some of us, we have, I know it's almond size, but we have fed that amygdala quite a bit, and it overrides the prefrontal cortex. And man, we're on a constant spiral down because we're constantly hyped up on adrenaline because of our worry and our anxiety and our prefrontal cortex says, I can't control it, it's out of control. Just like when the knock on the door, I would tense up and some of us, it may not be the knock on the door, it might be people. You had a bad situation with this type of person or this type of situation or this type of place or this type of event and I will never go to a, a large crowded event anymore because I had this one situation and every time I go there, I just tense back up and the amygdala says, no, don't ever go there again. Those places are dangerous. And it creates fear and anxiety inside of us. And what happens for many of us, and we stay locked into this, is we fall prey to a runaway mind, runaway anxiety. And it's almost like the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland. How far will we go? Philippians chapter four, Paul, again, was writing from prison in Rome. We covered this last week. He wanted to go to Rome, but now he's in prison got there not the way that he expected, and he says this, do not be anxious about anything, about that big test you have as a student, about that job interview, about that promotion that you feel like you got passed over four times, your financial fears. 
Don't worry about your kids. You did great raising them. But don't worry about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding, transcends the prefrontal cortex, even the logical part of your brain. It will guard your heart and your mind. Wow. Wow. You know, today we're talking about some science, aren't we? But I want you to know that science confirms the Bible, and the Bible confirms science, doesn't it? You know, I love Christians. You know, I think we as Christians, we, we really dilute the effectiveness or understanding of prayer. Here's how I know that. We'll say things like this. Well, I guess all we can do is pray guess, well, we tried. I guess we just, just pray. And I feel like God's up in heaven. Just pray. I'm like the creator of the universe. And whenever you pray, I respond and I hear you. It's not just pray. It's not the last line of defense. It's the first line of offense. The very first thing we should do is pray. Hebrews actually tells us, come into the throne room boldly, the throne room of grace. In other words, you can come into God's presence because of his grace, and because of that grace, come in there boldly, making your petitions known to him. Actually, James, the very first pastor in the New Testament, said this. He said, listen, you pray, you have not, because you ask not. The very things you ask for are the very things you receive, and how much more you have a Father in heaven that hears you. Prayer is powerful. Again, like I said, is the Bible confirms science and science confirms the Bible. See, not only does prayer move the heart of God, prayer also changes the very chemistry in your brain. For decades, neurologists believed that the brain didn't change after adolescence, which is scary. Thank God it does change, because if I didn't change after adolescence, you'd all be in trouble. This is the mature me, right? <laughs> but the brain is continually changing and being rewired. Remember those neural pathways? They're constantly being rewritten and rewired. It's called neuroplasticity. It's when things are being rewired, as I talked about before, we can take the neural pathways and rewire them with the God thoughts versus the negative thoughts. There's another word I wanna to introduce to you is this, is neurotheology. It's also known as spiritual neuroscience. It's a study between the brain and the belief in God. The brain and the belief in God and how they work together. Dr. Carolyn Leaf wrote a book called Switch On Your Brain and she's a neuro, uh, uh, neuro uh, a brain surgeon and I want you to, I want you to um, hear what she has to say in her book. She says this, it has been found that 12 minutes of daily focused prayer over an eight week period can change the brain to such an extent that it can be measured on a brain scan. Wow, look at that, 15, 12 minutes a day of focused prayer. What is she saying right there? She's not praying, yubba dub, yubba dub dub, thank you for this grub, let's go our way. But focus prayer, you got anxiety, worry, concern. The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord. What if we did that for 12 minutes a day, took one care that we're folk and we, we were carrying, and said, God, I'm gonna cast it upon you, and during a, a, a short period of time, a matter of eight weeks, we'll reforge that neural pathway. The Bible confirms science, and science confirms the Bible. Just think about just as toxic negative thoughts exist in our mind. What they do, they hurt the mind. They hurt the brain. But prayer, listen to me, Christ followers, prayer transforms and heals and renews the mind. Why do we worry? Why do we have anxiety? Why do we have panic attacks? Could it be that we haven't learned the spiritual discipline of focused prayer? That we're constantly bombarding ourselves with negative thoughts. 
We're listening to other people. We're watching TV. And those negative thoughts are being reinforced in our life. But if we take a moment as Christ followers, and I say a discipline, not a habit, a spiritual discipline of forging new neural pathways through prayer. Wow. Our life will be changed. So why, why, do we, why do we have this rumination? Why is it firing in all cylinders? Well, science basically calls it this. I'm gonna use my own terminology. It's an amygdala hijack. <laughs> that our mind, that little almond piece, is in a constant state of anxiety, or ready for this? Save yourself panic mode. I gotta save myself. No one's gonna help me. I gotta survive. Because if I don't survive, no one's gonna protect me. I gotta protect myself. And your, your amygdala is just firing on all cylinders all the time. Well, God would say it this way. That maybe it's not our amygdala firing on all cylinders all the time, being hijacked. The word of God, or God would say, well, no, the mind is dominated by sinful thinking. What is worry? Worry is the sin of trusting the promises and the power of God. Worry is, sin, is a sin of distrusting the promises and the power of God. It's saying, God, I know I'm supposed to cast these cares and this worry and this anxiety upon you, but I think you're a little too small. I think I can handle it better than you can, so I'm gonna take that and, because I distrust you and I'm gonna put that in my own life because I just don't trust you and that in itself is sin. Because God has never given us a reason why we should or should not trust him. He has always seen us through, even when it looks like he wasn't going to come through. Come on, somebody. See, as a Christ follower, listen to me. We have to choose. I'm going to use that word intentionally. We have to choose. It's not a feeling. We have to choose to let the Spirit of God direct our thinking. We have to let the logical part of my brain choose what is spiritual. It's hard. I'm a logical guy. A plus B equals C. And when I see it and I look at it, I, the numbers matter. The equation is this. But no, I gotta yield my logical mind, my frontal cortex, my amygdala, all my emotions shooting through the roof i got to say, Holy Spirit, I yield it to you. What is true? What should I think? How should I think? How should I behave? Romans chapter eight, verse five through six, ready? Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think uh, about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Wow. So letting your sinful nature control your mind, what's it gonna do? Lead to death. The wrong neural pathways. It's gonna affect your relationship. It's gonna keep you in anxiety and stress. What does stress produce? Sickness, fear, worry. Destroys relationships. But letting the spirit control your mind, what's it gonna do? Lead to life and what? Peace. It's when we take every thought captive, the free Frontal, prefrontal cortex grabs the amygdala by the tail and says, all right, we're gonna give this to God before we react and respond on what we see or we think we know. We're gonna respond accordingly. I know you don't wanna forgive that person, but I'm gonna capture that thought before I post something I shouldn't post. God, how should I respond? Because I don't wanna respond this way. All right? You know, a lot of us are born into this world, and we worry, don't we? We all worry, and some of us, we worry because our mom worried and our grandma worried, and we just are in this cycle of worry. And what we wanna do, and we hear this all the time, well, you need to take your worry and give it to God. That sounds wonderful, and it's a great place to start. Take that test, give it to God. That marriage, give it to God. Don't worry, your children, you raise, and you hopefully they're gonna make good decisions. Give that worry to God, and you try to take it and put it inside here, and we pray. Oh, dear God, I pray for my kids. Let them make good choices. I wanna kill them. And you pray that prayer, And after about five minutes, God didn't answer your prayers. So what do you do? You take it back. 
God, you, I prayed for my children. You didn't respond. I prayed for my husband. He's a yahoo. He needs a job. He hasn't responded. Oh, I'll take it back. Don't we do that all the time? We cast it upon the Lord and then we come back into the throne room of grace and we're like, hey God, remember that one burden I gave you? You're too slow, Joe. Give it to me. See, some of us need a bigger God. We need to change it, don't we? We say, oh wow, God is so much bigger than my worries that I can trust him. I can trust him in all things. You know, I'm gonna tell you some of my own worries. You know, worries that I have, I'll just be honest with you. I, I worry that sometimes, and my wife worries about this a lot, in our culture today that, that we live in, I'm sometimes worried that I'm just gonna say the wrong thing. Every now and then, my filter goes out the window. <laughs> because the world that we live in, everything I say and everything I do is under a microscope. And someone can just take a little snippet of what I said, and man, it can bring reproach upon me, upon my wife, upon God. I mean, I definitely want to do that upon God. I mean, I want to ever bring shame to God. Also, I don't want to ever bring shame to our church. I want to honor Jesus' name. It's kind of weighty on me in today's culture. Another thing that I worry about, my kids. As they get older, they're doing their deal. I see them making decisions, and I'm like, oh, God, that's a bad decision. You probably get that from your mother. But I worry. I worry, did I do, did I do the right thing? I have some regrets. Maybe I, maybe I should have did this. And it was heavy upon my heart. You know, the thing I worry about when it comes to Journey Church, I worry that, and I, know, I, know, I pray that we don't struggle with this now, but I, I, I worry that we're just gonna play the game. That we groan and we, it's wonderful to see all the places filled and there's a few seats left over. Maybe have to add a third service at Avon, a couple other, it's great. But I'm wondering, are we just gonna play church? Are we just coming for three points in a poem and going home? Are we just gonna, are we gonna be like Christ? And it was heavy in my heart that some of us are just not gonna take it serious. They were just checking it off the list and it was heavy on my heart. And you know what I'm trying to do is I, I'm trying to make my God bigger than my worry, but also what I'm trying to do in this season of my life is I'm actually trying to do this. Because each one of these is a way to live. You can choose to live this way because it's a choice. It's a choice that we make. We can live this way, we can live this way, or we can live this way. And sometimes I'm living this way and I'm like, God, help me to put this in you. Because Jim wants to live here. Because I want to control. I want people to do what I say. But I gotta trust you. I gotta trust you not just with my obedience, but the outcome of my obedience. Pastor Jim, that's responsible not to worry. It's, it's, you're denying things, you're denying reality. I'm not saying denying reality, but I think you should ask, I ask myself three questions. Jim, do what I can do. I'm gonna do what I can do. I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna budget, I'm gonna make, if I have conflict, I'm gonna talk to somebody, I'm gonna do what the Bible tells me to do. And then the next thing is I'm gonna give God what I can't do. If I talk to somebody because I offended them, they choose not to forgive me, I can't control that. I simply can do what I can do. There are things that God, my kids, God, I did what I can do and put the very best inside them, but God, I have to give you the rest. And finally, I'm gonna trust God no matter what. I'm gonna trust God no matter what happens. Imagine this for a second. Imagine a life with peace in your heart. Just imagine that. Imagine a life full of joy. Imagine a peaceful mind. Imagine a life when you wake up, it's full of peace because you fully trust God in all circumstances. See, that's not a pipe dream. That's not delusion or a fantasy. That's real. It's a choice that we can begin to make. You know, I wanna take a moment. I was gonna review real quickly the past four weeks. First thing we learned is this, is that our life is moving the direction of our strongest thoughts. My question was this, do you like the direction your thoughts are taking you? 
We learned if we don't like the thoughts and we have false beliefs and false statements we believe about ourselves and about other people, what we need to do is we need to identify it. We need to capture it. We need to redefine it. We said something like this. If you discover it and you begin to write the godly belief out, we're gonna write it, we're gonna think it, we're gonna confess it until we believe it. Say it with me. We're gonna write it, we're gonna think it, we're gonna confess it until we believe it. If you're watching in the, in the online, I'll type it in the chat section. Say it one more time. We're gonna write it, think it, until we believe it. This is hard work. This is hard work. You gotta put the effort into it, otherwise you'll never replace those neural pathways in your mind. What are some of the things that you begin to write? Jesus is first in my life. I exist to serve and glorify God. Write it, think it, confess it until you believe it. I'm disciplined, Christ is in me, is stronger, and the wrong desires in me have gone. Write it, think it, confess it until I believe it. I'm growing closer to Jesus every day. Because of Christ, my family is closer, my body is stronger, my faith is deeper, my leadership is sharper. I am creative, I am innovative, driven, focused, and blessed beyond measure because the Holy Spirit dwells inside me. Think it, write it, think it, confess it, don't believe it. I am walking in the favor of God, and favor is not fair, and I am a magnet for God's opportunities, and I will not fall prey to sideways energy. I'm gonna write it, think it, confess it, until I believe it. What do I declare about you? I declare this about you. You are not a hostage to your unhealthy thoughts. The weapons you fight are not the weapons of this world. You have divine power to demolish strongholds, demolish every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Worry is not your master. Worry is not your master. You trust in God. His peace guards your heart, guards your mind, guards your soul in Christ Jesus. Not, you're not a slave to your habits. You're not a prisoner to addiction. You have been rescued from the, prison, the power of darkness and brought in the kingdom of light. Yes. Write it, say it, trust it until you believe it. See, you can't control what happens to you, but you can control what you frame and how you frame it. I can look at all the negative things, right? Every single one of us have storms in our life. Every single one of us, none of us have a perfect life. All the social gram influencers, nothing's perfect. That's fake. They have storms. Or I can reframe it. And I can say, God, I know I didn't want this diagnosis, but I believe that you're gonna use this for your purposes. I believe that you're a healer, you're a deliverer, you've set me free. I know that when I'm sitting in a hospital, I'm gonna witness to people, I'm gonna witness a doctor, and with the devil intended for evil, you're gonna use for my good and your glory. Why is it so important to reframe things out properly? Because you cannot interpret God through your circumstances. You must interpret your circumstances through God. And how you frame things out will determine the direction by which you're going to go. The final thing we learned today was this. Cover everything you do in prayer. Everything. Decide, make the choice through prayer that you're not gonna be anxious about anything and in everything, prayer and petition. Present your request before God. Can I just say something to you? When you're mad at someone, before you go talk to them, pray for them first. Then see if you need to talk to them still. When you're gonna go freak out and, and get a second and third and fourth job because you need more money, pray first. Bring those things before the Lord and not, not allow a reaction to be the wrong reaction. Let the peace of God transcend your understanding. It will guard your heart and your mind. Let God empower you to win the war in your mind. How is that happening? We learn today. We'll know the truth. We'll hear it. Receive it. And it will set us free. Will you close your eyes and bow your head today? Wow, pastor. I've come here to journey, whether online or in person. And, and I realized that I've never received Christ as my savior. I live a life of anxiety because I'm living outside of Christ. You talked about worry being in Christ, but I've never made a decision to ask Christ in my life. I've never asked for the Lord to forgive me of my sins. Today I wanna give my life to Christ. Today I wanna become a Christian. Today I wanna receive the price he paid upon the cross as forgiveness of my sins. And I want, here it is, a relationship with him. 
Going to church does not make you a Christian, guys. But a relationship with God does. Maybe you've walked away from the Lord. Something happened and you ran. And God brought you back here. And you say, Pastor, I wanna rededicate my life back to the Lord. Maybe it's the first time, second time, or third time you've rededicated it. You'll pick up where you left off last. It's not starting over. If that's you in the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. I wanna give my life to Christ or I wanna rededicate my life. One, two, three, is there anyone? Thank you. Thank you, hands are going up here at Avon. I believe at Fairview and Twinsburg and those online. If you're watching online, if you're watching journey.church, you can click that respond button. If you're watching online, you can also put, I wanna give my life to Christ. Our hosts and moderators will lead you in a prayer. If you raise your hand, you're being handed a card right now at our physical campuses. It says, I have decided. It's what you're doing. You're making a decision to follow Christ. We take a moment and fill that out. And when you leave today, your campus, will you turn that in to someone with a red shirt or simply leave it on your chair? We'll collect it after our service. But let's do this. Let's pray this prayer. Then I want to pray for every person for a renewing of your mind. All of our journey campuses, pray this prayer out loud, this prayer of salvation. Say this. Say, Lord, say it out loud with me. Lord, I give my life to you. I ask for forgiveness of all my sin. And by your grace and through faith, I receive forgiveness. This day, I'm your child. I'm following you the rest of my life. Thank you for making me whole, making me new. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for every person that struggles in their mind. I believe that's all of us. I pray right now that that rumination of our mind to be broken in Jesus' name. Every generational curse of anxiety and that, that war inside of our mind, we break in Jesus' name. We walk into this place carrying generational baggage and that comes off today. We unpack that bags today. Pray for those that had experiences and trauma and, and different events that, that have caused their, the, uh, their, their mind to be pre-programmed. We pray our mind to be programmed according to the Holy Spirit to think upon things that are pure, holy, and just. That every other thing that sets itself up against you will be thrown down. Fear of the unknown, fear of tomorrow, fear of our children, our finances, all those things we cast upon you because you care about us. I pray for peace. I pray for those that lay their heads on the pillow and they lack peace. Tonight, I speak peace over your mind, peace over your body, deep sleep in Jesus' name. I pray they'll wake up rejuvenated, refresh in their mind, their emotions, and their body. I thank you, Lord, that we can cast these care upon, cares upon you. And because you care about us, you respond. We want you to know we trust you with everything. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. Hey, can you put your hands together and welcome your campus pastor as they come out to close out our service today. Hey, listen, I love you guys. I also want to say this. I want to say a happy 20th birthday to my son, Joshua. Come on now. Love you, son.